All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Pat Taste Performance. Uh, we got this uh, white in. This is going to be part two. We are going to replace the auger and the drive belt. So we're going to start. We're going to pop off these two 3-8 bolts for the belt cover. We have one here and one here. And we're going to expose the belts. It's poor lighting. You guys know. There's another belt. There's another belt cover in there. Now, if you guys remember part one, I had the guy actually deliver this machine, running and driving for a hundred bucks. He said he tuned it up, which he did. He has a brand new spark plug, but he didn't change the oil. Remember, this thing came in running and driving. Holy snakes, it was right. All right, so let me show you guys something. Actually... I'll show you. Look at this belt. When I ordered the belts, I didn't realize. Look how thin that drive belt is. And you can tell that the belts need to be replaced. You can see that the, they're a little shiny. So let me just grab the belt. And um, eBay has the best price on belts. It's going to be the part number. I'm going to drop these in the description. All right? This is your drive belt. Look how thin that is. I mean, that's not maybe a quarter of an inch. And then this is what I love. I love cogged belts. So cogged belts are, are superior than V-belts because you see these grooves here? They dissipate heat and they're stronger. It's supposed to last longer too. All right, so I'll drop the link in the description, but this is what it says on the receipt. I forgot what I paid. Not a lot. All right, can we do the ogre belt without, well obviously we have to take all the belts off, but I wonder if we could do this without splitting the machine in half, because that would be ideal. All right, so we're gonna pull the tensioner off, and we're gonna slide the belt. Right, still on the tensioner, keep pulling, keep pulling. Watch your hands. All right, now that's free. Actually, we're going to take the cover off because we're going to service this too. All right, so here it is in the service position. I don't have anything to cover the auger, so I kind of just set it on my creeper. So now to remove... The belly pan cover, one, two, three, four, and this should slide right up um, for the belly pan. And we're still using the with the three eighths. Come on, dummy. Alright, so let's get these bolts. Two bolts fell. One, two, three. And this one did not want to color. So this bolt, so this bolt was kind of frozen. I had trouble getting it out. So what I did is just jam the screw driver to put pressure on the belly pan, and look, it comes right out. Yeah, this is in pretty good shape. Look, what we have here. So I got my flesh in here so you guys can see. All right, so this is your sprocket. I'm going to grease this. This is your friction disc. It's in really good shape. We're going to grease the shaft. This is in really good shape, this machine. And we're going to replace the belts. So 
Yeah, let's start by that. So remember, we already fished out the um, drive belt. So let's see if we got enough slack on it. So we're pushing down on the drive belt. And here we go. Push the hit this bracket, and we're just going to pull towards the machine. Out it goes. Now, auger belt is a little bit more trickier because remember we have this break here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clamp down the drive handle to free the break. And we should be able to release it. And you see this here? This is your keeper. We're going to have to undo that too as well. All right, so in order to undo this keeper, right, Three-quarter wrench here, and a nine-sixteenths on the smaller one, on the other side of the bracket. I'm just going to undo this. Then see how? Just came off. Three-quarter, big one, nine-sixteenths, small one. Now we're going to clamp the handle. All right, so here we go. Got the auger hand tied up. We release the brake. Auger belt is off. Like so. Let me just pop off this brake. Let the light. Let me just pop off the auger belt. You see that? And now we're just gonna slide everything out. And you guys can see, look. See there's no more tension on the brake. So everything should just come right out. We gotta start with the auger belt first. And remember, we are going to feed it through so we can get a good grip. See how I pushed on it? And just work your way and just work it out. So now, in order to get the auger belt that we're going to have to release the brake and we'll freeze the tensioner because the tensioner is actually stuck. Alright. And now this should be free. Now sometimes on certain snowblowers, they want you to split this thing in half. So I am trying not to split this in half. But if I have to. So I'm just kind of manhandling it to be honest with you. And now we need to reestablish the, the pressure on the handle because you now I got it full tension. So it was stuck here and now it shouldn't be anymore. You should just be able to get a flat tip screwdriver and just work the belt down. Like so. See, now it's free. And now we could just pull the belt out. To the top. Walker belt. And you see this? Look. See how this is worn? No good. New belt. And then from there, we could just pull out the drive belt, like so. Drive belt, go on. All right, let's get the new belt. So we're going to fish the belts through the top. Now the drive belt has to be first. It's not making you guys nauseous. Drive belt has to be first. Skinny belt. All right, so we're going to stick the drive belt through. Remember, we have to feed it through the top. 
going to go right between the machine and the pulley and just feed it through. All right, we'll go to the other side of the machine. We're going to grab that belt. Like so. And just push it through. Wrap it around. Like so. And just start to spin. Spin the wheel. Okay, we're going to come back around on the other side of the machine and just, and just pull it tight. I'm not going to show you that. You guys can see. Because you guys could feel the belt. You see that? See how it's nice and tight? I'm going to come back around here. And now we're just going to, uh-oh, we can't do it that way. All right, so obviously we can't slide the pulley off just yet. So now we're going to take the tension off. Whoop. Slide it over. Get it here on this pulley. And then now we'll slide it on there. And just spin, <clears throat> spin the pulley inside the thing. Inside the machine. As we put tension on it, then it will go around itself. See, now it's in. And then now, we're going to pull back on the tensioner by hand. I don't know if you guys can find blocking you. You guys really can't see this. Alright, so I don't know if you guys can see this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull on the pulley tensioner, I'm sorry, towards me. And this thing is spring-loaded, so be careful. Pull it all the way towards me and slide the belt in. And that's it. We're in. I don't know if you guys can see. We're in. Now, for the auger belt. Now remember, the auger belt is still Tied up. Auger control is still tied up because we're releasing it on the brake. So now we're going to have to take that off because remember, I couldn't get the belt through here. This is too thin. So release the handle. Okay. And then we're just going to slide the auger belt through the top again. Pulling okay. through the top, through the bottom. All right, I'll take you guys to the back, to the business side, I guess. See what we're working with. And we'll go from there. All right, so now, if you guys remember, this is pretty tight. Now we have to get this over the hump. So use your use your three quarter wrench. Just pry up. And you should be able to slide this belt over. There we go. Belt free. Belt free. Remember. See this where this friction is. See how that moves. Pry up and push the belt through. Alright, now we are going to slide the belt over the engine pulley.
don't do it on uh, yeah leave it off the tensioner because that's going to be a, a you know what so just give us enough slack per se we have to do this at the same time we're going to put tension back on the auger handle Remember, we want to get through the blade break, so let's start getting this in there and push down. There we go, like so. That's in there. Put a tensioner back in so it doesn't pop out. Remember, three quarter and nine sixteenths. front of the machine and right here like so and now we have to release the tension <sighs> all right so this is on nice and tight tension has been released We're going to put the machine back down. Now slide this belt over. Now the cool thing is, right, when you're doing belts, use the machine to work for you. See I slid the pulley on? I'm pulling the handle on the actual machine. Here's that. Okay, and then we can see here. Here I have too much tension. So let's get this over this hump. Alright, that's that. Alright, so release the fuel. Let's see how she goes. It's gonna get loud, just so you know. Actually, no, let me open up the doors. Okay. You see how the auger spins all the time? No bueno. So let's see if maybe this cable needs to be adjusted. Is there an adjustment on this machine for this cable? Hmm. There isn't. Oh, 
found the cable hanging off one of the wheels. Let's see. It still spins now. Alright, so these should be half inch 13s. We're just going to pull this pulley back over the wall. Wow. It's a 916, so we're going to try and get this done. One sixteenth, one here. Oh, we just cracked that nut. All right, this is at max adjustment. Oh, wow. So why? Let's check the brake on this thing. It's definitely there. See, this is your brake. You guys can see. This is your brake right here, and it is touching the belt. Alright. Put this back down. Success. So, while we have the machine up and in pieces, we are going to just start to service this thing real quick. What we're going to do is we are going to apply grease, and I'm also going to paint the machine. The wheels, I'm going to restyle it. I'm going to paint the wheels black. So I'm going to pull the wheels off too. All right? I won't bore you with painting them, but we're going to grease this shift here. <coughs> Grease this wheel, and we pull off the wheels, we're going to grease them too. Alright, so 13 millimeter, we're going to zip off this wheel. Comes right out, set that aside. Now, why are you asking me, why, why, why are we pulling off the wheels? Right? You are going to thank yourself later. God forbid you have to service this machine. No, shit. We'll find that wash up. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna paint it anyway. God forbid you have to service this machine, right? You're gonna have to pull up this wheel to change the friction disc. Friction disc. And if you don't grease these wheels, they're gonna be one hell of a time to get off. So Alright, so 13 millimeter, we're gonna zip off this wheel. Set that aside. Now, why are you asking me? Why, why, why are we pulling off the wheels? Right? You are going to thank yourself later. God forbid you have to service this machine. Oh no. Shit. We'll 
find that washer. It doesn't matter, I'm going to paint it anyway. God forbid you have to service this machine, right? You're going to have to pull up this wheel to change the friction disc. Friction disc. And if you don't grease these wheels, they're going to be one hell of a time to get off. So, you see how nice and easy those wheels came off? That's because either this thing was stored indoors or somebody actually did service this. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to get a grease gun. Did somebody use this? Yes, we did. That's what we got. That's messed up. Somebody used my grease gun at work. We didn't even bother charging it. Oh, there it is. Right, just enough, we're going to slide that around. Right, put that to the side. Right, just move this up and down. Around. And the excess grease, just wipe on the wheels. Take your gear lever and just put it, cycle through the gears to the other way. And then you just work the grease on the other side. Pick up the excess grease and just work it on the other side, up and down and around. Bring it back. That's it. That's greased. Now as far as the wheels go, we'll pull off these plastic spacers because that's what they are. And we're going to expose the shaft. See, spacers out. And what we're gonna do is what I like to do with this part here is I just like to put just a little bit there because then as we spin the shaft, it'll lubricate itself. Then we'll go to the wheel shaft. We'll put some here, like so. And the same thing on the other side, like so. Basically, we'll put this piece back on, right? And as we put it in, we're going to turn this thing round and round. Because then that'll bring grease into the entire axle. All right. And if that pops out, no big deal. And same thing with the other side. See that? Oops. We would keep that. Nice and good. Like so. And that's it. This is greased. Alright guys, I know I cheated a little bit. Um, I did some paint work, obviously. Uh, this machine was like the United, the United Nations of color. And there's nothing wrong with diversity. But when it comes to a machine, absolutely not. This thing was one, it was what well, so we have red, white, or gray. I'm partially colorblind, right? Then we had like a darker gray. And then, so it was no, it was white, red, and like a light gray. And they just didn't match. Oh, and black, because remember, then Travis black. So what I did is I changed the skid shoes to black to make them pop, tires black. This was black, I mean, this was gray. Black that out, black that out. Oh, and I gotta remember, I just have to put the uh, shoot stuff on. Black this out too, right? Now, this machine is three colors instead of what? Four or five? I lost count, don't matter. So now, not only does it look better, it actually performs better because I also supercharged and modified the Impeller. Now, I'm gonna drop a link in the description on um, how to do it on this machine because I've done this to a couple of machines and it's the same identical um, procedure to do it on this machine as a few others. So check out this description. Yeah, man, so check this thing out. See, look, got Mandingo in the background. See why I black it out? See, ooh, black, black. See, black is beautiful, baby. It really makes it pop. So uh, yeah, so this is it for now. Um, part two is just me. I'm gonna, you know, do a tune-up on it. Um, we already started the tune-up. Remember, we greased the wheels, we greased the bearing. Um, we greased the wheels, we greased the auger. 
um, shaft, I mean the drive shaft where the friction disc rides on. Um, so all I'm going to do is he said he changed the oil, the oil's dirty. So we're going to convert this thing to royal purple, synthetic, my favorite oil, and we're all good to go. So just check this out, man. I paid a hundred bucks for this thing delivered, running and driving. Belts were less than 15, 16 bucks. So this thing's going to be a home run. Uh, I'm going to put it up for sale for 400 bucks. Take my first 350 offer, offer if not, into storage it goes. And uh, we'll definitely get around maybe four to 500 bucks in the wintertime. Pray for snow. Remember, I'm taking a gamble. We did not get a lot of snow. So my goal is to stack up on as many snow blowers as I can. Price point, 100 bucks tops. All right? Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you. All right, guys. So this is it. This is going to be the final step the last part of this white mtd 5.5 24 inch you know we didn't even have to fix this thing we're just flipping this we did a little restyling remember painted the the wheels and the skid shoes modified the impeller greased everything changed the belt and the last process is before i drain the gas out and put the source we're going to change the oil so i have the luxury of having this little digit so that's all i like to do i like to the snow blower up there and uh stick the drain pan underneath and then just let it fall out so i have the machine running for about 10 minutes and uh now we're going to drain the water so what you're going to need is a 5 8 socket stick it on here ready tighty lefty loosey now he said he changed the oil but he did it it was nice and dark i don't care um, I would convert it to royal purple anyway. That's just one of my signature services, per se. Just the things that I do. Um, we have to pull the dipstick out too as well so the oil flows nice and nice. And then I'm just going to move this. And then I'm just going to dip it down. Right in the hole so it doesn't really spill. And that's it. We're gonna get our measuring cup out. While that spills. Remember, my Home Depot pink can. going to take you away from this real quick and because I use royal purple so much I buy it in five gallons so all right so see how it's falling down a little bit now this is why I like to uh, do the thing now I just like to turn see how much more oil is coming out oops we'll clean that up now we know this thing is empty. Alright, take this out. Make this nice and snug. Now here's a here's a tap. Right? If you're draining the oil on your snow blower and this whole thing spins, you know this is this is your, your plug. But if the whole pipe spins, right? The whole pipe spins, get a vice grip and stick it right there, not on the threads, on here, and that's going to hold the pipe in while you unspin it. Alright, so 5 horsepower Tecumseh takes about 20 to 21 ounces, if memory serves me correct. So we are going to pour 20 ounces. Now, usually I have a smaller one that I transfer oil to, but the problem is I'm in a little bit of a rush today. I have to sell my Troy Bit One Mill for $250. So I'm trying not to unearth everything out of the garage. 
just to put it all back in. And uh, today was beautiful. Hold on. Picked up this chainsaw delivered for a hundred bucks. So it's an easy fifty bucks for me. I didn't do anything. Can I put the oil in? Nothing slow. I'll probably do a video on the chainsaw. How do you, how do you make fifty bucks in less than five minutes? <laughs> Anyway, pour the oil in. Let me just put you guys down for a minute. What do you guys see? Just get just a quick wipe down with a dipstick. Now, the thing is with, with, with small engines, if you overfill it by like an ounce or two, it's okay. Don't go crazy. If you don't have a measuring cup, you know, be, be, be vigilant. Don't go nuts on pour a whole quart. You know, because you smoke out the rest of you trying to avoid a smoke. You're not going to have catastrophic failure unless it's a lot, a lot, if you overfill it. Give this thing a pop. Have this thing running. Clean it, nice and smooth. Now when I check my oil, I like to thread it all the way in. And I'm going to scoop it back out. That's one thing I hate about it. It's a little purple sometimes. It's hard for me to read it. It doesn't help that I'm partially colored now. It takes me a few of these to register. Yeah, this is on the money. So we are good to go. So now the last thing for me to do is just... So what I like to do is I like to run the machine completely dry. Right? This is gas is cheap. And then I remove, I remove the jet nut on the bottom of the carburetor and let that drain out. And that's it. This thing will fire up first pull. So... Alright, so this is it guys. This is going to be the final walk around. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm just going to put the before and after pictures so you guys remember what this thing looks like. Before we restyled it, made it more desirable, made it look sharper, we updated it, black wheels, black skid shoes. This thing isn't the United Nations of color. We modified the impeller. Supercharged the machine basically. New belts. Royal Purple Synthetic Oil Change. We do not need to put a new spark plug because he put a brand new one in there. Adjusted the skid shoe. I mean, come on, man. Look at this. This is a sharp-looking machine. Change my mind. Change my mind that by restyling it, we didn't increase its value. We didn't increase its potential to sell. So anyway, I also put this up for sale just for poops and giggles. I'm not going to sound like a broken record every video I do with a snowblower that we had a light winter. But I'm taking, like I said, I'm going to take a really huge gamble with snowblowers this year and really stock up on them like I usually. But this one, it's my, my limit is 100 bucks. And remember, I got this delivered, running and driving for 100 bucks. Electric start and all. So that's it. My budget's 100 bucks tops. And we're just going to bankroll on these things. Unless it's like a nice machine like an Arians or a Honda. We'll do something completely different. 
All right. So, uh, yeah, man. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. For more small engine repair, more snowball, more lawnmower videos, man, we're rocking and rolling right now. So, man, I'll see you guys in the next episode of Pat Taney's Performance.